Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra. One of the best options for around 300 US dollars. This X570 chipset motherboard features 12 plus 2 phase VRM, high quality audio, 3 M.2 slots and a Wi-Fi 6. But let's dive deeper and find out if this is a motherboard for your build. First of all, let's do a quick unboxing and see what's included with this motherboard. You get plenty of stickers, quick installation guide, a disk with drivers, but as I always mention, please download the latest ones online. And the best friend for any PC builder, user's manual. Also there are quite a few accessories included, 4 SATA cables for your drives, a few temperature sensors, RGB extension cable, a few velcro straps for your cable management. This is one of those things I really like about Giga motherboards, G connector. Then we have a Wi-Fi antenna and a few M.2 standoffs and M.2 screws. Board looks nice with a few shiny surfaces and so I had to do lots of lots of peeling. Gigabyte is using quite a lot of plastic, especially on heatsinks. In some cases this might affect VRM thermals, but this board has decent temps, so nothing to worry about. I will run through main features of this board. Decent RAM overclocking. X570 Aorus Ultra has 4 DIMM slots that supports over 5100 MHz memory. So there should be some room for playing with RAM overclocking if that's your thing. 3 M.2 slots. All of them covered with nice looking heatsinks and support super fast Gen 4 NVMe drives. So many M.2 slots is definitely an advantage, especially for someone that needs quite a few NVMe drives, for example content creator. Really fast integrated Wi-Fi. You get the latest and greatest Wi-Fi 6 and that's where an included antenna comes into play, so you could get a strong signal. High quality audio. This motherboard features ALC1220 audio codec with some enhancements from a gigabyte. And that's pretty much the best codec you can have today, having in mind it's an integrated audio solution. Easy BIOS update. With a Q flash plus button you can easily update your BIOS from a USB stick and you do not need CPU, memory or a graphics card in order to do so. Thunderbolt add-in card internal header. Unfortunately, this motherboard doesn't have a built-in Thunderbolt connector. But since a board supports Thunderbolt add-in cards, you can get it separately if needed. This is probably not for a casual PC owner, but I thought I need to mention such an interesting feature. 12 plus 2 phase VRM. Nothing too impressive here as you can find similar VRMs in cheaper 200 US dollars boards like Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus. But Aorus Ultra has quite decent heatsinks, so the temperature will more likely be cooler than on a cheaper board. USB Type-C support. You can find a rear Type-C connector as well as a Type-C internal header for connecting PC case front panel. Our Ultra supports quite a few fans as it has 7 fan headers. All of them are 4 pin meaning PVM controlled. Also you will be able to connect quite a few RGB fans or LED strips as the board has 3 RGB and 2 addressable RGB headers. That's definitely not all the features of this board, but more or less the more important ones. Let's have a look at what kind of I.O. we have on this motherboard. In total we have 10 USB ports, 4 of them are USB 2.0 ports, then we have a few USB 3.2 Gen 1, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 2 and 1 USB Type-C port. Connectors for a Wi-Fi antenna, HDMI port in case you have an integrated GPU, Intel Gigabit LAN and 7.1 digital audio. In general, this is a good X570 board when compared to other X570 motherboards at this price range, but as always there are some things to consider or could be better. For example, I would like to see not one but 2.5 gigabit LAN or a postcode panel instead of debug LEDs. So what are the alternative motherboards to consider? First of all, Gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi should be on your list. 
Basically, it's a very similar board with minor differences, but you can find it $40 cheaper. The main difference, Aorus Pro has two M.2 slots instead of three, but for a casual PC builder it's really enough. Hasrock X570 Tai Chi has the same MSRP price as Aorus Ultra and is also one of the best boards for around 300 US dollars. It has few USB ports but features a postcode panel, onboard reset and power buttons and better VRM temperature under heavy loads. So when compared to X570 Aorus Ultra, this board is better equipped for overclocking. But do you really need X570 board? This is a question I often ask many people. There are really great and much cheaper B550 alternatives. And the main difference between B550 and X570 is that B550 supports one NVMe Gen 4 drive, while X570 supports Gen 4 on all of its M.2 slots. Sure, in case you are a content creator and you build a high-end video editing system, you might want to go for X570, but in most cases people think B550 is a lower tier chipset and so are these motherboards. And it's not the case. B550 was released after X570 and in some cases cheaper B550 boards has the same or even better VRMs than X570. To name a few high-end B550 boards, MSI B550 Gaming Edge, Asus B550 F Gaming or Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro. They cost 50 to 100 US dollars less than X570 Aorus Ultra. Actually even sub 200 US dollars B550 boards are really good in terms of running high core count CPUs, but they have a few features. To sum up, Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra is a good board, but before going X570 be sure you really need it. There are some good B550 boards that perform well and are less expensive. Also, in case you do not need free M.2 slots, you should definitely go for X570 or Pro Wi-Fi. But in case you're planning to build a serious PC build, you can book a dedicated time with me and I can help with making a personal PC parts list for a certain budget, guide towards the best value and quality PC parts in your country and adapt for your specific use case. So if you're interested, you can do it by messaging Epic Game Tech on Instagram or Facebook page. I would be super grateful if you share, like, subscribe as it helps a lot and definitely check other videos right here.